The Octava Mark 105 is a really cool microphone. Uh, it is a large diaphragm condenser microphone for studio use. You could also use this live, doesn't matter. It sounds really good. I like it a lot on uh, guitars, on electric guitars, on bass, and it's good on some voices. I'm not gonna say every voice because different mics seem to favor different kinds of voices uh, in more or less pleasant ways. Um, I like this microphone uh, so much I ordered a matched pair of them. Um, but I haven't been using it as much as I probably could. And the reason is because uh, as, as nice as the bass is on this microphone, stock, the way it comes, there's a little bit too much coloration for my taste. And it tends to sound a little too dark, maybe a little too dense. I uh, don't know how to quite describe it, but it's lacking in the fidelity that I really want out of a large diaphragm condenser. It just doesn't sound as open as I want it to. And I'm willing to bet it's because of this uh, head basket that we've got going on. Let me get the close camera here. And you can see it's got a really gorgeous look to it. On the front is a chrome and gold and on the back is black and gold. And I find it to be very attractive. I think it's a very handsome microphone. Something I like about Octava also is they're not trying to be anything. This is not a recreation of some other microphone. This is not a knockoff of some kind. This is a genuinely original microphone with a genuinely original capsule made in Tula, Russia. Um, so, what I did to, to my, one of my microphones is I pulled out the head basket and um, you can see the difference is pretty startling in what it looks like. It's much more uh, clean looking and in terms of sound, I find it to be an improved sound. Um, I feel it's more open. I feel that the detail and warmth is really there and things sound bigger. Whereas before it just sounded like there was a cloud in there. And that's because I pulled out this double layer mesh. Now, I do like how it looks with the gold. I think it looks very nice. And uh, one reason I actually might not want to do this to my microphone is if I smoke or if I'm in a dirty kind of environment. Uh, capsules on condenser microphones are almost like little vacuums in a way. They're electrostatically charged. That's how it works. I'm not going to tell you all about how condenser microphones work. There's a ton of literature on that, so go look it up. But basically, when you remove these inner grills, there is the possibility of more dust or particles in the air coming through and sticking to that diaphragm. And that's going to change the sound of the microphone, most likely in a not good way. So if you like to smoke around your mics, which I certainly hope you don't, um, but you know, whatever, some people do. They're just mics. Buy a new one if you trash it, whatever. But uh, this will protect your microphone from that, those kinds of dust and particulates, okay? So I don't know what you're smoking, but if you wanna do it around the mic, don't do what I'm about to show you. So what exactly is the sonic difference between these two when you have the head basket removed versus stock how it came? Here's a clip of a side-by-side -side comparison of these microphones on an acoustic singer-songwriter type performer. So check this out and you be the judge. Субтитры 
спросил, какая на сердце кручина, скажи тебя, кто огорчил. Ах, барин, барин, добрый барин, уж скоро год, как я люблю, а не Христа расстата. Тарин меня журит, а я терплю. Like I said, I think it's worth doing the modification. To me, it just sounds more open. There's a better uh, high frequency response, in my opinion. So I'm going to take you through how to do this to your Octava Mark 105 and unleash the, the beauty inside the beast here, okay? You ready for this? Now, the first thing I wanna say before I get into the tools you'll need is if you have any kind of hesitation at all about operating on your microphones, the guy to send them to is Michael Jolie of Octavamod.com. Octavamod.com is absolutely, in my opinion, the best place to send uh, an Octava microphone to get it really, really tuned up. I've purchased a pair of Octava mods before. In fact, the uh, boom microphone that I'm recording my voice with over there is an Octava MK012 with the hypercardioid capsule on it. And I think it just sounds gorgeous on pretty much anything. So you can pay Michael Jolie at Octava Mod to do this, or if you've got the guts, you can rip out the guts yourself, okay? So here's the tools that you're gonna need. Um, first and most importantly, a set of precision screwdrivers. This'll cost four or five dollars. And there are six screwdrivers in here, ranging from uh, about a millimeter to 2.4 millimeters, and I've, uh, or even three millimeters, there are two Phillips and there are four flatheads. What we're going to need are the flathead screwdrivers. Um, I've got some epoxy glue to make sure that this remaining head basket mesh is nicely glued in place. And some Q-tips and like a little sheet of scrap paper because epoxy is actually two gels that get mixed together into one really noxious smelling compound that glues stuff together forever basically. Um, I always have a pair of work gloves. I like a pair of thin, rubbery work gloves just because it helps keep a good grip on things, prevents me from stabbing myself in the hand. Uh, you're also going to need a place to hold the microphone body because once we remove this head basket, the capsule itself and the body are still one piece, so we'll just like sit that up in here. Um, you'll probably also need a small amount of water because you might get thirsty. Let's go. First thing I'm gonna do is set my, my modified one off to the side here where it's safe. And uh, on the bottom are these tiny, tiny flathead screws. So I'll take my two millimeter precision screwdriver and these little screws are located just right along the, the circumference of where the head basket screws onto the body. These screws are really tiny. I don't want to lose them. I don't want to strip them. As usual, I'm working on a white towel because it's a nice soft work surface and uh, things can fall on it and not bounce very far. And also uh, it's high visibility, you know, so I can just put things together and not miss them. So I'm gonna shut up and just unscrew these very carefully. And now all eight little screws are removed. So I'm going to very carefully, nice and slowly, pull out the body 
from the head basket. And we can see we've got a gorgeous gold diaphragm. Here's the back plate. And I'm going to just set this guy right up here, just like I was talking about. This is away from my workspace. I'm not going to knock that. It's not going anywhere. Okay, let's continue. So all eight of these little screws are now safely removed. There might be a better way to do what I'm about to do. I don't know. But I'm basically going to just stab this out. So with my screwdriver, I'm going, uh, I'm actually going to need a smaller one. I'm going to take the one millimeter screwdriver because what I want to do is get in between the existing large grill that's there. And, and I can see that this one millimeter is the only one that goes through. So when I'm punching through, there's a bigger mesh on the inside and that's this this other interior silver mesh, okay? So what I want to do is push through the gold and push out that silver one. And I want to not destroy the bigger one that's on the outside. So again, if you're if you're not too keen on just stabbing your microphones, you might want to go to octavamod.com and have Michael Jolie do it cuz he's the man. You can see looking in there, it's starting to, to bend through. And I'm gonna just be very careful, very patient. I don't wanna rush this. I don't wanna accidentally bust open other stuff. Now I'm just gonna shut my face and, and just keep doing it. So that part is almost loose. I think I'm going to go get my needle nose pliers for this. Okay, I got my needle nose pliers. So now it's loose. As I'm pulling it out, I want to be careful not to damage the existing screen. And there we have it. And there's a bunch of little metal particulates from the old stuff that want to come out. Now it's open. It's clear. And the golden sonic chastity belt has been removed from this awesome microphone. I'm gonna inspect for just a, a couple loose pieces and see if there's any, any frilly stuff like this little end right here. I'm gonna just pluck that out. Don't want that in there. And what we can see is right here there's a little bit of separation where this front one came out, okay? It's really, really important that these baskets that are still here keep good contact with the metal frame. Not only do head baskets on microphones protect against dust and moisture and stuff like that, it also protects against electromagnetic interference, radio frequency interference. And if we don't have a solid contact between the existing head basket and the frame, there's gonna be a bad ground 
and it's gonna hum. It's gonna have a, a, a low pitched constant hum that's gonna render the microphone garbage. We don't want that. So I've got those massaged into place really nicely. And uh, looking in there, it's possible to see the seam where we're about to put just a little bit of glue because we don't want that stuff flying out. Okay, so it's glue time. Here's how this epoxy works. First of all, don't eat this stuff. Whatever you do, do not eat the epoxy, okay? That's gonna be bad. I don't know what happens. So I've just got some Q-tips. Um, yeah. And I'm gonna just squeeze a little bit of this out. We don't need a lot. That's plenty, that's more than enough. Make sure you do this in a well-ventilated area and don't lick it. So you stir it up. Now all I wanna do is just very carefully, super, super carefully, I just wanna put a little bit up top there on one side and then I'm gonna to come to the other side. Okay, that's it. That's all that needs. That looks good. Now I'm gonna go on to the other side and I'm actually gonna use even a different Q-tip because that cotton gets stretched out a little bit and I don't wanna leave like cotton pieces in there. I'm gonna do the same exact thing. And just very carefully put a little bit of glue up in the top center. Here we go. And just give those a little press, make sure that they're seated nicely. Yep, yep. I'm gonna put one last little piece of glue. kind of at an angle, as I did the first one, with that open space. Now, I don't want to drench this with glue, I just want enough that's going to secure the contact between the frame and the mesh. That's it. This glue is done. It does not need more than that. Hard part's over. That's it. Now, Mr. 105 here is gonna have to wait for this glue to dry. Uh, you know, if you want, you can wait 30 minutes. It's probably a safe amount of time, 30 minutes. If you wanna be really safe, you read the label and it says, uh, leave undisturbed for 30 minutes. So we're gonna do what the instructions say. And I'm just gonna, I guess, let that sit there so it stays upright. I'm just gonna drink some water. For a half an hour. Okay, well, it's been about half an hour out of my life, and um, I think it's time to finish this thing up, huh? So, let's do it. I guess I, I took my gloves off in between then and now. Should put them back on. Okay, it's time to put this head basket back onto this uh, microphone body right here. So um, there's only one way to do this and it's carefully. So I'm gonna just really carefully pull that out here. Now I know there's a little bit of 
of dust or something on this thing. This little conical part right here. So I'm gonna just very gently, very carefully take the, the corner of this towel. And I just wanna wipe that off. I just don't like having dust on my stuff. Is this a necessary step? No. Am I introducing extra danger? The possibility of smashing my diaphragm with a towel? Yeah. But it's gonna be cleaner, and so it's worth it. Okay, that's clean enough for me. The front of the microphone, the capsule, is the side with the wire going into the front, okay? So that's where you want to have the, the grill pointed. The back side has the perforated metal disc that you can see. Um, so on the head basket, there's the designation for the microphone and the little cardioid symbol. That's the front of the microphone. Likewise, on the body, the rear says, Made in Russia Tula, okay? So I want to make sure that the blank side of the head basket lines up with that. Also, even another mark is the brand Octava is stamped onto the top there. So I want to make sure that that reads towards the front of the microphone. Now we've got our eight holes that are in this body here, okay? Going along the edge. When we're putting these screws back on, what we need to do is treat it like a, a tire where we don't want to just hammer all of the pressure down on one single screw and then go around. What I'm going to do is just gently set them in place and then begin tightening opposite sides, going opposite each other. So just because it's going to be easier to remember, I'm going to start with the very front put in that screw first. So as long as I put the screws in slowly and, and, uh, and don't completely tighten them, it doesn't matter which order I get them seated in. But when I start tightening them, it's going to become very important. I am, however, going to put the front and back one in first to make sure that the uh, the head basket stays put. Now all my screws are set in place, I'm going to alternate and go around and tighten these up one at a time. She's done. That is a beautiful microphone. Just look at these two. Oh, they're made for each other. I mean, actually, they were made for each other because it's a match pair. Anyways, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope you found this beneficial to your microphone collection. If you do not have an Octava Mark 105, I really suggest checking it out. It's a unique microphone with a cool look to it. It's got a cool sound. It's great on piano. It's lovely on acoustic guitar, on voice. Um, I also like it on brass instruments. So, um, thanks for watching the video and uh, stay tuned for the next one. Have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.